Hi, I'm Sarah Myers, apiarist here at the North American Bee Care Center. Today I'm excited to show you a demonstration of our beehive. So you'll notice the very top here is the roof of the beehive, very similar to the roofs of our home. We'll gently open this, place it to the side so we can easily check on the bees. Now this white box on top is referred to as a top feeder, where we can add supplemental food when needed. This is really important to keep bees from starving during dearth periods where there's not enough flowers blooming, perhaps during the spring, summer, or winter times. So the bees can crawl up to the top of this and access the sweet syrup down in the bottom and then use that for their energy consumption. Now these hardworking bees need lots of food. And one of the ways you can help bees is by planting flowers, not just as a beekeeper, but anyone out there can plant the right flowers for bees and provide them plenty of food. Now we're opening the inner cover where we'll see all of the bees. This inner cover acts as a great moisture barrier and insulation for the beehive, certainly during the spring, summer, and, and more importantly, during the winter time. You'll notice a few bees crawling around the top of here, but most of them are inside this beehive. So let's take a look. Now this hive is called a Langstroth hive, and there are 10 frames inside. A frame are what the bees use as their home. They build out wax on each side, and you'll notice the honeycomb pattern gets them started. Now when bees make wax, they're usually only about three weeks old, and their job at that time is to build the honeycomb wax, which comes off of a gland on their stomach, and they mold the honeycomb shape into each of the perfect areas. So this is just an example of a starter piece the bees haven't started working on, but we'll take a closer look and find one where the bees are working very hard making all the wax. I'm using that hive tool to help pry the frames apart. The bees like to keep the frames very constructed together using a substance called propolis, as well as some of that beeswax and honey can get very sticky, so having your hive tool handy is always good when manipulating a frame. On this side, you'll notice honey and pollen, so let's take a closer look. Fresh nectar are in the center here where it's nice and shiny. This will soon be made into honey once the moisture content is drawn out. The bees will continue to fill each cell with nectar and they'll fan their wings to draw the moisture content out of the nectar, making it into a thick honey and then covering it with a layer of wax. That's how we know that it's great to eat at this point. So the pollen and nectar collected on these frames will be valuable food for sources for the bees during the fall and winter. On here, we see a great example of a brood centered area where the developing bees are. Bees that have pupated, so almost adults, will be capped over with this brown capping and shortly they will emerge as adult honeybees. Now most of the bees on this frame are all worker bees who are female. Worker bees only live about four to six weeks during the spring and summer because they literally work so hard. They have different jobs, some of which include cleaning the hive. You'll notice some of them are in here cleaning each cell or maybe caring for the young. So you may notice they're also sticking their head inside the cells where they could be feeding the essential baby bees or in the egg larva or pupa stage. There are also a few drones in this colony which are the male bees and their job is reproduction with the queen in the colonies. Now drones only live a few months during the spring and summer and unfortunately when they mate they die so their lifespan is very short. He's larger than the sister workers and he has big buggy eyes which help him facilitate mating in the air with the new queens. So here you see the queen. She's marked with a blue dot on her back meaning she was just born in April 2015 and next year if we go in this hive and find the blue marked queen we would know she's approximately one year old. So having the queen marked with this colored dot helps us identify her age and easily find her amongst all the bees of 40 to 60,000. Now queens aren't born with this colored dot. A beekeeper has to use a very small uh, amount of paint and paint her back on her thorax. 
So earlier in April, I colored this bee, because she was a new queen, with just a small dot of blue paint here. Now you'll notice the queen is much longer than all the other bees, and this is because she is the only egg-laying female in the hive. And her job is to lay 1,000 to 1,500 or more eggs every day during the spring and summer. And right now, she's walking around looking for an empty cell where she could potentially lay a new egg. And this job is very important because she has a large workforce of 40 to 60,000 bees that she has to be populating each year. So laying eggs every day is a very important task in the hive. Now during the winter time, the queen doesn't need to lay many eggs because there's not a lot of work for the bees to do. So she will cluster in a ball with all the bees and they'll vibrate their wing muscles to keep warm. And because the queen's so important, she'll be right in the center, keeping the warmest during the winter time. Bees will fly within one to three miles, ideally from their home to find food. The resources they need are pollen and nectar from plants. Pollen will be their protein source and nectar will be their carbohydrate source. Nectar then is made into honey, which is something we get to enjoy. And just a fun fact here, the worker bees, who only live four to six weeks, only make about a twelfth of a teaspoon in her lifetime. So we have to thank a lot of bees for that one pound jar of honey that you might purchase from the grocery store or another local market. Thank you for being a part of the Beehive demonstration. For more information, please visit the Bee Center website and don't forget to check out the Meet the Experts section.